Hi, could you introduce yourself? Tell me your name. Sure, Dave Rakin. And what do you do here? I'm a program coordinator here at the College of Computing Informatics at Drexel University. Drexel University? Yep. Great. How long have you been at Drexel University? I've been here nine and a half years. Cool. So what we're here today is to talk about some paranormal activity that you've been witness to or know about here at Drexel University okay. uh, and in Philadelphia okay. in general. So I've only lived in Philly for a couple of years, but I hear a lot of stories about Philly having a lot of haunts. You think that's true? Yes. And I know that there's some rumors of paranormal activity at Drexel? Yes, I've heard rumors of that. So yes. what kind of, what stories have you heard? So what about this building that we're in right now? So this building is the Rush Building, the home of the College of Computing Informatics. It's, uh, the building is an old tuberculosis hospital. It was built in 1904. So as you walk around the building, um, you'll see the rooms are basically shaped to be like hospital rooms. There's a morgue downstairs and some other places downstairs. So yes, there have been people who worked here who when they're here late at night, hear noises and, and sense things and things like that. I have never done that, but I, I have talked to people who... And who what have. kind of things do people experience when they think an area is haunted? They hear noises. Um, some people have seen maybe a shadow, maybe felt a breeze, things like that. Do you think there's any data that could be collected to find out more about this? Okay. Sure light sound, yes, things like that. What good stories have you heard? I've heard stories of people who've been up on this floor. Um, they've been the last one here. Maybe the lights are flickering or they hear noises. Obviously, like I said, downstairs, there's a morgue area, there's a sub-basement area. So I've heard, I've heard stories of noises down there. I've never been down. I've been in the morgue before, but all during working hours, and the lights have always been on, but we'll go down there. was an active morgue? What period? Uh, we've been in this building, I believe, since the mid-50s, so, okay. so 100 so years ago. 100 years ago it was an active morgue in tuberculosis hospital? Yes. That's the building was built in 1904, and the tuberculosis hospital named after Benjamin Rush, who's a famous 18th century Philadelphia physician. He was actually one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Since the mid-50s, we've been housed here. There's all kinds of stories. As you, like, when you walk around, you'll see the different rooms. They're, they're mm -hmm. kind of shaped like hospital rooms. Hmm. Um, one of the funny stories, a wall outside of here, right. basically the, the urban legend is because uh, patients with tuberculosis, they, they wanted to go outside, so they built the wall so that they could be separated mm -hmm. from the general public. So yeah, we'll go, we'll go around, see some of the rooms, see downstairs where the morgue was housed. I'm starting to creep myself out. What other areas of Philadelphia have you heard ghost stories about? Well, obviously Eastern State Penitentiary. Um, that's mm -hmm. the big one. Eastern State was one of the larger prisons on the East Coast. Um, I believe Al Capone was housed there. I forgot when the last prisoner was there, but now it's turned into just a giant haunted house. It's a really creepy place. I have never been inside. I've been outside around it, so it's just a big creepy place. So that might be a good place for you guys to look at. Philadelphia is just a very, very, very old city. Some of these buildings have been around since, you know, we were colonies, yeah. right? I mean, yes. obviously, they signed the Declaration of Independence right out here. So Correct. So, yeah, so all some that of the buildings, is going to be. I mean, you can go, down, go, down, go downtown and see the original cobblestone streets. But yeah, Philadelphia is probably a really good city to uh, explore some ghost data explore, in. Explore, yeah, look for some ghosts. Do you think that modern technology is going to be useful to paranormal investigators? Yes. I think that, again, tracking data, tracking temperature changes, tracking sound, 
um, tracking movements. I think all that can be put into data. And I don't know if you can ever answer the question if ghosts exist, but there can at least be, you can use data to prove that, that something has happened or is happening. One of the other investigators I talked to said that the key was to have a device that could both stream data, but that was portable, mm -hmm. so that it could be taken pretty much anywhere. Yep. And so that's one of the reasons that we're focusing on using the cloud in this project, Okay. because we're just trying to make sure that we have the ability to access that data anywhere, and so that's the that's okay. our project idea. You know, to take that data, bring it down from the cloud, and analyze it later is going to help out a lot. Especially if the data, if you can track changes over time, track changes over hours and nights and whatever and see and then talk to people who were there and maybe if, if person X hears a noise you can go back to the data and see that at that point the noise was heard mm -hmm. there was a change in data. And, and there's always that human factor yes. as there's always that the ability of somebody to physically be present and also have that sensation. Yeah, we can just stick a work study in, in the in the morgue for hours on end. So here we are in the former morgue. Yes, so this is now a usability lab for, for uh, faculty and staff use, or faculty student use. But back in the olden times, it was the morgue for the tuberculosis hospital. So if you go back in here. Um, yeah, let's head back that way. The ceiling in here is pretty low. Might be like new construction on top of old construction. Yes, huh? a, lot of, a lot of this building is new construction on top of old construction. Right, let's look around. So that chair is where the mortician sat. Okay. Yeah, that's just it. Um, but back here, um, there was some new construction back here, but um, back towards the back wall um, is where the bodies used to come down. Um, okay. It looks like we, it looks like in, in um, redesigning, and turning this into the usability lab, turning this into an office space, they uh, build over it a little bit. But back there is, the, is where the morgue was. Um, the bodies would come down, there were slats in the wall. So this is new construction Yes, this here. is new construction. This is on this wall, and then that wall is old yes. wall. Yes. And then this curved ceiling and the bodies would slide down this way? They would actually, I believe they would come out there and then there were some slats on the wall either end where the bodies would lay. Oh, creepy, weird. Yes. It's interesting how they've uh, painted over everything with these nice cherry colors. You know, sort yeah. of, they sort of make it not so morgue like. Yeah, they made it a lot, lot lighter here. The last time I was down here, it wasn't so bright. So yeah, there's there's a there's a this is now a um, faculty office, a faculty lab. So there's uh -huh. a faculty and and uh, doctoral students working here um, okay. regularly. Um, so yeah, I've, I don't know who I don't know the students who work in here, but I'm sure they share some stories about. Anybody ever working here at night? Uh, I'm sure they have, yes. Oh. Let's explore. Yeah, let's go. Here, see what let's it's like go here. this way, yeah. We've been walking to this place. Creepy basement. Right, we're going to walk toward it. I like the, the head with the band on it. What are they doing there? Uh, probably some sort of sensors. Sensor data. Oh, this like tunnel like slides down yes. too. It's a little bit. Yeah, so I guess, I guess they would just take the everything out. Right, they would roll it straight down. Yep. Now these were all like hospital rooms. Yes. Okay. So a lot of a, a lot of the rooms here on the right have been redone to be now classrooms. Right. But a lot of the offices on the left are still offices and they're still rather small. Do they still hold classes? Like they hold classes in these rooms here? These rooms here hold classes. Okay, got yes. it. And since y'all are on a, the, the trimester system, there's classes in here during this week even. Yes. Right. And on the left are faculty office, uh, faculty staff offices. Rainbow Lab.
And there's another floor, which we can try to go down. Try to go down on another floor to the next floor? Yeah. Okay, we'll try that. All right, head back this way. Hi, so what's your name and what do you do here? My name is Danny Lopez. I'm a student worker up here in iCommons room 106 of the Rush building. And you've worked down here at night before? Pretty late, yeah. Sometimes I'll just like stop by and like check on computers or like work on the systems inside. So what, what kind of things have you encountered or what kind of things would you report that have happened that are strange? Sometimes it'll just be like me and nobody else. The lights will be out and everything and I'll just be like sitting behind the desk and I'll swear that I hear like footsteps coming from like further down the room, just things like that. I think it would help to have some kind of device that could detect sound in the area to see if that was happening or? I don't see why not. <laughs> Do you, you want to walk through this way and tell me where? Sure. Well, well it wasn't down here. It was more Floor that upstairs. Way? Upstairs, okay. like on the first floor, on like first when you floor? walk in. Yeah. Room up there where it says iCommons. Uh huh. Like above the room itself, and I'll right. just be in there, like working on the computers or. Walk this way. But it does generally get kind of creepy in there. Yeah. Late at night too, knowing the history of the building too. Yeah, knowing the fact that it was a hospital at one point. Mm -hmm. It still has a lot of the old construction too, and I guess a lot of it's just new layers. So which way to the room are you trying to go? Oh, it's this way. That's the room right there. It's in here, like the lights will be out and everything, and I'll just be behind the desk that's like right here, and then in that back area uh -huh. where like you see more offices further back I'll hear like footsteps or something like that or sometimes I'll hear what sounds like a step right in front of the desk when it's just me in the room real wow. late at night. Crazy. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your story with mm -hmm. us. You got it. <laughs>